You're listening to WICR, where we dance the night away. Welcome back to another episode of We Got It Covered. Dominic is finally back here. You know, I was here these last two weeks doing it by myself, but the man is back. Yo, was I not back? Was I not here two weeks ago? Yeah. No. I wasn't? No. Nah. Damn, I'm a fraud. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let let the record good. show I'm a fraud. We good. Well, we, he brought a guest, too. We, we have, have a guest best, in the building, Matt. We have Matt. a guest. The queen's born. Queen's bred. My son, Headphones. Matt Vargas. Mm-hmm. Say what's up. Say what's up to the broadcast. What's up? What's up? What's up? How's it going, guys? How you doing, man? Are you, uh, you go to school here, right? Yes, I do. Gotcha. What year are you? Sophomore? Junior, bro. Junior. 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 Yeah. Nice. So for the people who don't know who Matt Vargas is, just give him a look. Give him a little sound sound. Give him a little taste. What does Matt Vargas do? What does he want to do? What makes Matt Vargas Matt Vargas? What makes Matt Vargas Matt Vargas? That's a good question, bro. Uh, just a little rundown, man. I'm from Queens, you know, home city of Nas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. <laughs> I DG on the side, which is like my main little niche, you know? trying to make it big on that but mainly mm-hmm. it's just school right now got one more year left now i'm gonna jump into broadcast media something similar to what you guys are doing here you know mainly sports but it's pretty much the vibe you know what i'm saying so sports you want to be a commentator do you want to do journalism sports journalism sports what? is a pretty broad topic yeah. you know what i mean so 100%. Usually, usually when people go into like what they want to do they'll say sports but they don't understand that sports has so many aspects to it whether it be the behind the scenes on camera or even just the business side of sports you know Mm -hmm. sports financing and all that stuff there's a bunch of different little jobs within sports that you can do so it's kind of about finding your niche but you did make mention of doing broadcast media though so what would you want to do with that i was looking more into like commentating 100 percent um i know you mentioned dom outside of here that you know you do podcasting and stuff Mm -hmm. and that's something i actually wanted to get into because you know when it comes to the culture whether if it's music or fashion that's something i really take a lot of pride in Mm -hmm. because that's what i grew up in i feel Mm -hmm. like queens is so diverse Mm -hmm. that like you know, it's just something you have to learn and pick up and adapt to as you grow and, and you know, do what you got to do. I definitely, out there, definitely you know? do agree, especially when it comes to, like, the actual inner city kids in the five boroughs. The five boroughs in of themselves all have different culture. And there's one thing that I will say is that all five people from the different, all five boroughs have, like, a different identity to them. Everybody mm-hmm. carries themselves in a, in a very specific way. That to the untrained eye, so if you're not from New York City, you're from upstate <laughs> Jersey, you don't notice it, right? Yep. But mm-hmm. if you're a city kid who's been living here the entire time, you'll notice somebody from the Bronx, someone from Brooklyn, someone from Queens. You know what I mean? Exactly. I definitely, definitely do agree. As for the actual broadcasting angle and actually doing commentating, you should probably look into commentating some Iona games. I don't know the specifics of it, but I do yeah. know that it is, it is a possibility that you can do. So mm-hmm. it depends how hard you want to follow it. True. Yeah, you can talk to uh, Steve. Shout out to Steve. So he does every Iona game here, basketball, volleyball, uh, water, polo, or whatever we have, soccer, um, lacrosse, every game he's doing it. So if you if you really want to, to do commentating and stuff like that, you can start working with him, and, and he'll definitely definitely yeah, put you on the right path. We'll definitely put you on the right path, and I also do think that doing the podcast is definitely a good look because the podcast just gives you, like, practice just to mess with your voice a little bit. You 100%. know what I'm saying? Because you're doing mm-hmm. commentating, it's pretty much just strictly audio. And audio in of itself, there's like the little tricks of the trade, the little tools that you can use within audio. And doing a podcast gives you the comfortable space to do it in. Because when me and Andrew do the podcast, yeah. right, it's just us two and then we have a third person who, can, who makes it whenever they can. And it's just a makes basic basic conversation. Basic conversation, whether it be about sports, whether it be entertainment, music, and this, that, and the third. So that gives you practice and, let, and it eventually will let you transition into live commentating because that's a different beast in of itself you know what i mean of course, mm-hmm. of course. and also with podcasting and, and doing radio shows you'll start to hear things that things that you do when you talk you'll start to hear them and you'll be like yo that's that's annoying hey. shout out to ashley if i gave Makai, shout out that was good they had a good urban night last night i had to miss some of it because i had to go to hockey but, but how, how was urban night they told me it to was going through at nine o'clock but your boy was editing you know what I, 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 have a, I have a good question for you guys because you know i when i came to the school in 2013 right mm-hmm. i never knew what the culture or the or, or like the light the nightlife was out here how is it out here you know is it, is it dead is it okay it's, has it it's, picked it's up a over little, the years it's a little dead it's a little dead it's a little dead and a half but <laughs> there are things to do out. Well, if you're looking for house parties, Iona is not the spot. It used to be the spot. I'm going to keep it honest. We'll have a real, real, real talk. It used to be the spot my freshman year. I remember my very first night of freshman year, the very first time I went out to a water polo party and got absolutely thrashed. Damn. <laughs> I, you thought I got thrashed? I got a photo of my roommate, which I will show you probably within the break, of my roommate the very first night sleeping on our bathroom floor. Oh, my God. So <laughs> it used to be much crazier, but from what I know, 
New Rochelle got a new police chief. Oh and man, he's been cracking down ever since then. So now parties are dope for the most part. Yeah, they've been they've been kind of cracking down on people and parties, and there's been a lot of complaints and stuff like that. Because you, you gotta know, realize that New Rochelle is just not Iona; it's also people who actually live in yeah. actual residents. So That's like, true. if you're yeah. partying till twelve and, and it's like a Friday night and they got a family, you obviously want to get some sleep. You know what yeah. I mean? And but I think your best bet is Iona. Iona will do right. Is the day drinks. That's an actual thing. You just gotta know the spots to go to, and then the bar life. That's all it is. It's just beach and specs. Mm-hmm. But that's about it. But specs when it comes, is lit. Yeah, but when it comes to Iona's culture, like you said, it's a mix, though. Mix, right? It's a very, it's a, it's a weird mix. It's <laughs> like you got your heads. It's like I think it's the commuters and the people who live on campus, right? People who live on campus are your typical people from like Long Island, Connecticut, from far away. Then you have your your mix of people within the city and stuff, right? But it's like the the culture. How I like to. Uh, emphasize it it's the backwards hat the vineyard vines the sperries <laughs> the khakis you feel me let's get fucked uh, up bro <laughs> that you know what i mean okay, and then we okay. have then we go back and then you have the actual commuter which is the inner city kid so it's like a, it's like two different it's like it's weird because i feel like iona in a sense especially through my four years is kind of clicky because it's like there's different groups and that group usually stays amongst themselves they don't really go out and expand their horizons yeah so yeah it just depends if you really think about it, I don't like the actual student population. The way everybody moves is kind of like a high school. Okay. Yeah, and the only way that that we would we could get rid of like all this is to become a university and expand and you know take more buildings and places like that. You know, build more residence halls and and departments and things like that. So that'd be the only way to to get rid of that. But they said that they aren't trying to do that. So they aren't or are they're not. Well, that's what they I said. Feel, no, oh, they, man. They, I feel like they, they're, they're making like, a lot of moves, though. They're, make, they're definitely expanding. I think right now they're just focused more on the academic end because it, they're opening, like, the entrepreneurship school, mm. which to me, you know, we've talked about this many times, Drew. I don't understand how you have a school for entrepreneurship because isn't entrepreneurship the self-made man? Yeah. How do, you can't... I understand you can learn, like, tips to become self-made, but that kind of goes against the spirit of an entrepreneur. Yeah, you can't teach, like... Entrepreneur is, like, you getting dirty and you doing it all yourself. You can't teach that. You can't teach that quality. You can teach, like, the lessons and the techniques behind it, but the quality, which is, like, the biggest part, in my opinion, can't be taught. It's kind of like like an oxymoron, in a sense, but I think that's where all their money is. Yeah, that's what Gary Vaynerchuk, who's an entrepreneur, that's what he says. Like, you can't teach it. You can't teach the hustle. Like, you can't teach the fight. Like, the like, that like LeBron the gr- James like, has. Like you can't grind, do that. You can't teach that. It's you just cannot. It's some people. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and that's okay. Like, I'm, I know that I'm not. I can't be an entrepreneur. I don't want to be an entrepreneur. And that, that's perfectly fine. But you can't you can't teach that. You, you have to actually want it. You actually have to work with it. But uh, back to what you're saying about uh, podcasting. So, like like I was saying, you hear the little nuances or things that you say or things you do. Like, I used to be like, uh-huh, 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 all you'll, the time into the mic. Like verbal tics. You, you, you know, like a verbal tick, for example, you'll notice it when someone's presenting in class. They'll be like, um, after every word or um. They'll have like a little verbal tick to keep it going. You'll exactly. pick that up when you do a podcast. And when you're commentating, for your case... You don't want to go um after every word. You want to have a clear, coherent thought. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm so flowing, mm-hmm. essentially. Exactly. And that and that really helps you in the long run because you, then you get to practice how you speak. Then you get to speak more eloquently. You get to speak better. You get better at conversations. And I used to have like problems like thinking, oh, what am I going to say next? What am I going to say next? Now, like whenever you ask, whenever I ask a question to the person, I just just make sure that I listen to their response and then. From that, I'll ask a question or I'll have a question prepared on hand, and it definitely helps. So podcasting, um, make sure you get a group of friends or like me, Dominic Moses, and just do your thing. It's definitely fun, and it's definitely a great way to get yourself out there too and to practice. Like We did four or five test runs yeah. before we ever dropped anything first, and even the first one, like we were still trying uh one thing we're still that, having problems and stuff like that podcast especially you know, i think it goes for most podcasts it's like when you actually start it you'll notice yourself get better because you start building chemistry and there's like a set there's like a bit of synergy between everybody so you know when to cut somebody off you guys can go off and bounce off random topics like it's just like how you know in the case of basketball right when related back you know how when a team plays together for a very long time they're just nice they all click all kind of stuff yeah. like like for example the warriors the Dispersed. reason why the warriors are nice and i'm gonna say this first <laughs> The reason why the Warriors are nicer is not because they got KD. They were nice before KD. It's because that team has been playing together for a very long time. So KD, so Clay and Curry know how to play with one another. It's the same exact idea for the podcast. 
Now you have me and Andrew who know how to play off one another, who, who can talk about. We know our strengths and our weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, within the podcast, Andrew can go on for days about politics and news. And I can come in there, I can add my little opinion, I can add a sprinkle, but when it comes to that, he's the man who can give you the facts and everything else. When it comes to film, TV, entertainment, that's my type of realm, you know what I'm saying? He can bounce off of that stuff, you know what I mean? It's just knowing who you're working with, knowing what they're good at, and then just, it's the timing. Timing is what comes most, and you just pick that up the more you do it. Mm -hmm. And also get people who you like but are different from you, so then you can have two different views on, on certain things. I mean, we... We have a lot of the same views on on certain on certain issues and certain topics, but we react differently to them, and we'll give you a different point of view, a different take. So that that definitely helps too, because you don't want like the same exact person, somebody exactly exactly like you, to to be doing a podcast with you, because then it gets boring after a while. That's so, true. That's yeah. why it also helps to have multiple people. So so if you have four heads, like I understand, you might get you and your four boys, which is obviously a great time, right? Yeah. But if you and your four boys all say all share the same exact idea about everything. Which the, where does the discussion lie? I yeah. feel like you, podcasting should be about versatility at the end of the day. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Versatility between opinions and talents. You yep. know what I mean? 100%. Yeah, definitely. And don't be afraid to go um, on tangents, on rants, because that's what makes great podcasts, too. I had a podcast yesterday with uh, Rob Baez. Shout out to him. Mm -hmm. We did we did one. We do a wrestling podcast. Um, and we went on like a couple tangents, but that, that really made the podcast better. It makes it, it, makes it sound authentic. You yeah. End of the yeah. day, it's just a giant conversation. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Sometimes conversations are picturesque back and forth. Yeah. Sometimes it's me talking to my mom for 20 minutes, and then it's you going, oh, no, I don't really think so. And you're like, what? Stuff like that. It's just trying to make it. It shouldn't feel staged. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I and feel like for a podcast, especially when you make it, there should be a set structure as to the way you, you tackle a topic. But not everything needs to be clearly cut out, bullet pointed. You know what I'm saying? You can have some fun with it, too. Freestyle mm -hmm. and it you'll, you'll get moments where your friend Moses will say he could beat up Floyd Mayweather. And those are the funnest ones. And those that's the funnest ones. He, those literally, are the he literally channels. He's like, nah. He's like, he's like, I'm not saying I could win, but I'll be there in, <laughs> for a round or two, and I'll right. survive. I'm like, I don't think you're ready. Bro. Hey, good luck, Moses. That man's been fighting for longer than you've been alive. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a that's fact, funny. bro. All right, we're going to yeah. take a little quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk entertainment.